surveys all about the dirty sound. Ooh, what do you know about the dirty sound? What's it about? Ah, uh, yes, the old dirty sow, home of the banana and mayonnaise sandwich. You'll forgive the audio, I... I hope. I was hoping to be done with this noisemakers in here. I haven't quite put my life back together yet, but this lovely 110 degree heat wave here, waning days of September is uh, just so very welcome. Thank you, weather engineering gods. Thank you. We've learned our lesson. Whatever that lesson is, trust us, we've learned it. You can move on now. You can go teach someone else the same, same punishing lesson. Give us back the monsoons, please. I was rather fond of them. In any case, welcome to the survey of the Sal, if you're just joining us. This is a very different approach than the other surveys that I conduct usually or fall I shouldn't say conduct I follow along with I guess I audit uh, this one this is the Carnegie survey of the South this is separate from the historical American building surveys that they conducted this one was done one big large sweep across the South there's virtually zero information about any of the properties there's just a name sometimes a date sometimes not even that uh, it's much more grand and the architecture is much more fantastic because a lot of the stuff is gone my theory is is that this was sort of the inventory we're taking inventory of all this old world stuff and we're per through it because sometimes there'd be a massive property and there's just one picture sometimes there's a massive property and there's just a picture of the front door and a picture of a lamp you know it's um it's very strange it was not very thorough or at least what's been filtered down to the general public is not very thorough but as you can tell it's extraordinarily fantastic and visually stunning and in many ways it's a lot less curated um than the others and it's much it's high on visual sadness really because a lot of the stuff is gone now i'm gonna say that since there is no real information that I can give you. It's full of just reckless speculation and me simply going on visual. It's very freewheeling and um, it's not as dry, but I don't promise that you'll learn anything. We're just sort of speculating on stuff and uh, and marveling, really. Largely, largely marveling, I'd say. So with that being said, let's carry on. When we last left off, we were being spellbound by this massive St. Augustine property, which features a graveyard and then also a place called the Fountain of Youth, which is full of dead skeletons. With the irony, I I don't understand how gross. I mean, I'm not sure where you can go to find just exposed skeletons lying there. I don't think that was a thing. But here in St. John's, at one time, it was. I judged the majority of his photographs to be taken to about the 30s, was when they conducted this survey, in all of its old world splendor. And here's where we left off last time, so that is where we'll pick it up this time. I think that's how that goes normally, right? This is on Treasury Street. This is also on the same property of St. John's, very suspicious uh, St. Augustine here in St. John's County, here in St. Florida, in the United States of America. Where nothing un untoward ever goes down. Everything's on the up and up. All things are within the realm of and the blessing of God and of science and of man. This is the Perez Sanchez house, also known as the Mr. or Mrs. E. G. Snow house in St. Augustine and St. John's County in St. Florida. I'm not really seeing where the house is, but definitely tell by these old world gardens here. Actually, this is kind of interesting. Look at this. I expected this, um, not that, but this. I expected the wall to be, uh, stone, but it looks like it's just, um, oh, maybe it's flagstone. Damn might be flagstone or flag I thought for a second it was like shiplap that's eh, probably stone I, i've never seen shiplap on a wall so that'd be weird okay yeah, look at the cars so yeah this is um 1930s oh maybe even earlier with that one i suppose i could how well i wonder how long the survey took them to complete oh this says 1936 for this picture so that seems odd maybe uh, it was 1936 by the time they got to putting it together and the photo was taken earlier i don't know that car just seems a little bit uh more early 30s if anything but again reckless speculation i'm gonna get a lot wrong because I don't know what's right. Oh, look at that thing. God. This has been one of the most magnificent properties I think that we've seen on this survey. We can move these toolbars. That's better. Ain't that better? How cool is arrow, dude? I got arrow too, dude. Mine's way bigger. This is a very interesting picture here. It's a Brian. Simply called Street Scenes. St. Augustine. Street Scenes indeed. I've seen before, but I wonder where. 
Interesting mix of uh, relatively modern structures. Definitely some types of construction and then whatever's going on back up there. How bizarre. This is this is a picture of transition as we mold and reform everything down the lower parts and then the parts that are harder to reach, you know, we gotta put those off until the technology can kind of catch up but we can, you know, get up there with ease and then we'll transform that. You just wait, sir. We're coming for you. This is always a giveaway. This is a spiky uh, lantern here. Always a giveaway. I've said it from the beginning. I'll say it again. I'll say it to the end. Almost looking like a western town here. The Pablo Cafeteria. Very different from the sort of structure that you see down in the very end there. Isn't it? I presume these are more street scenes. And yes, my presumptions are strangely correct. It's more like street scene. Just from a different angle, you know? Yep. You've been spotted, bro. Oops. You've been spotted, bro. Wow. Why are these arrows so big? Tone it down, my arrow friend. That's better. Pew. More like street scene. Just from a different angle, yeah? What a beautiful little place. And this looks more like the other 30s. So maybe that one guy just had an old, older car. A surveyor looks like he drives a little bit of a, a dated car compared to these gorgeous beauties. What I would do to have a Hudson Hornet would kill. I would kill time. I mean, you just show me where a dragon is. I'll go kill it for the chance to own a Hornet Hudson. This is the Cordova Hotel. Or at least, you know, from one angle. Very washed out picture here. But Jiminy, look at the detailing on that. It is just fantastic. And we're told nothing about it. Just the Cordova Hotel. It looks kind of funny. Like something kind of got washed away here or something. Oh, you know what? Is that an airship? Just me or is this strange watermark or like strange uh, abnormality on the can move? Just me or does this strange abnormality here vaguely resemble an airship? They smudged it out, huh? Be curious to know. This is the Constitution Monument, we're told, in the plaza in Florida. We're told it dates back from the first Spanish occupation. Constitution mind. Curious. This is the Lion Bridge in St. Augustine. This building structure date is 1927. It's absolutely gorgeous and it looks absolutely ancient in many ways. Why can't we build bridges like that anymore, I wonder? Now we do we don't know how? Hmm? Or is it just beneath us now? Now we have like, you know, material quotas and gotta cut some corners to show growth every year, huh? Speaking of that, I really enjoy watching the current political class uh, as they play games with people's minds and say, look, look, inflation's only 2% right now. And people will actually parrot that back to you. If they don't understand the what they're comparing, what they're looking at, it's like, well, how is that statistic gathered? Is it 2% compared to last month? Because that would be insanely bad inflation. How is it for a year? How is it for three years? Four years? No, don't worry about that. You just look at these numbers here. Look, we're going to show you growth. Look at the growth. See, we've grown the economy. Well, if you factor in the, the money you've taken as loans, you're adding that to your total value. Yes, you certainly have grown in debt, but no. We're not going to let like, pesky facts get in the way of our campaigning. And it's just amazing how many people fall for it. Let's still read the tabloids and think the world around them is real. I'm not mad at them. I'm just amazed they exist. And I'm sad. I'm sad about it. This is the ruins of a monastery. I don't know why I said it that way. A monast <laughs> monastery in New Smyrna in Florida, also known as the Mission Atoquimi de Hororo. If I said that right, those words seem foreign to me. What is this place? I mean, I wish I knew more about it. I mean, I, I see that it's ruins of a monastery, but what else is going on? How old is this place? Uh, like something you'd find in Car Paravel in Narnia, not in Florida. A fascinating place. I think this is maybe where they filmed uh, Jungle Book, and I think I maybe just completely made that up. But you can imagine a orangutan ruling with an iron banana here, calls himself King Louie. Very curious place. I'm gonna guess this place not exists anymore. I can't imagine how this would survive uh, just in some jungly area in Florida. I mean, this looks like it's not even set apart like an archaeological site or anything. It just seems like it's just there. Like there's a golf course just over the, uh, the hill. I, I obviously don't know that, but I mean, does this match the history that you're told of America? Does this look like anything like what you're told? Well, yeah, Spanish missionaries were here hundreds of years ago. Like, okay, I mean, I'm saying this looks older than hundreds of years. Based on every archaeological logical dig I've ever seen. And basically, there's a golf course over there, isn't there? Wow. Amazing. I mean, homes that are 100 years old, that are relatively unchanged, are very common. And this house is like 70 years old. I don't, and no, no matter if I walked away today, it wouldn't look like this in 30 years. It wouldn't like this, look like this in 130 years. In fact, it would never look like this because it's got a different foundation, but still, you know. What I mean. <laughs> this stuff look old. I just don't think 1800s is just enough time unless someone really just dismantled it. What to do with that? Now, this is the ruins of a sugar mill. Of course, there's all, always a sugar mill. You know, there's always, it's always a sugar mill in Hawaii, in Arizona, everywhere. There's just a sugar mill out there in the middle of nowhere or a sugar factory. Uh, this is a strange one. On the one hand, it looks like that machinery was just sort of dropped here to explain this, but 
it looks the same as the monastery, like the type of construction. So it's like, did the Spaniards have this type of uh, cast iron steampunk sort of mechanical machinery back then, 1700s? Or is this building from a completely different era and the walls and the machinery were constructed or put there at the same time and that's all that's left? Or are we just finding that machinery somewhere else and dumping it on here and naming this place a sugar mill to give it some backstory? I don't know. Something about it just doesn't seem right. I mean, just doesn't seem to make sense. This is blocked in for why. I mean, I guess you could be looking at an old a, old industry of some sort, old mining machine, but it just seems like um, something doesn't quite fit. If you're going to have this machinery, why would you put it on this? Wouldn't it have like a, a steel, solid, cast iron, like footing, like a framework to sit on, not just stone? I mean, it looks like they just plopped it on here and which it cracked the, and broke the, whatever this was, this pedestal. I don't know. Very odd. And this is the same mission. Um, these are listed as geared wheels. So was it a mission or was it a sugar mill? Or are they trying to imply that it was a mission and then became a sugar mill? I don't know. When I get to uh, that part of Florida uh, on the surveys, when if it's still around, I'll be able to do a much deeper dive. Because the way the way this works, uh, most of you already know this, but the way this works is I, I only go with what the survey I'm, is presenting. I could do a deep dive on each individual property, but I assume they're going to come up later in life and, and more in-depth projects. So that's why I kind of gloss over them. Which is what I did in the very first um, survey I did in Pennsylvania. I didn't, I didn't have access to the data, and so I just whizzed through like, we. But now... I do a lot of homework and research and really try to get as much from it as I can. And the reason I do different projects concurrently, uh, I know some people who have said, oh, dude, like finish, you know, keep going with certain things. The reason I do it simultaneously is, if, is multifold. One is so that, A, it doesn't just drag on and I don't lose interest doing a video after Connecticut day after day and all the subsequent reading and information, which much of it is really dry. But also the point of this entire um, exploration that I do is showcasing all around the world the similarities when we're told we're so different our histories are so different our timelines are so different and so it doesn't it oftentimes when i'm running various things at the same time it it enables me to stay in that mindset where I'm noticing things here that are the same at the same time credited to the same people as in a different state or a different country so it's very um, serves a few purposes and also just to break it up like this guy's little face here sorry bro we are inside a place he said stalling for time called he continued still stalling for time uh, Prince Murat house he said haltingly as if unsure well yeah I am unsure or maybe this is the Dodge house well I don't know one of those two doesn't look like a place where a prince would live no prince I know anyway Hey guys, so let's go with Dodge House. But well, we're still in St. John's County, Florida. This is the Spanish Inn. Oh, so we're back on that street again. Or at least a very similar street. I'm guessing it's probably the same street. We don't know anything about this. I will say that all these pictures, everything you've seen today, and many of them for this survey, have, were taken by someone named John Francis Benjamin Johnston, who was a photographer who lived from 1864 to 1952. And at the pass at the passing, this entire uh the estate gave this entire collection to uh, the Library of Congress. But sometimes, like this one, you'll get pictures where it says Dr. Chatelain's photographs is where this came from. So I don't know who that doctor is or what's going on with that, but okay. So those interior shots were of the Spanish Inn, all of them. And this is the Slater house. First name AC, maybe. We tried to get an interview with him, but he just called us a preppy, closed the door in our face, started doing push-ups. This here is the Lindsay house. No known information, at least none passed down to us common folk. What an odd hodgepodge of material, huh? Very classic look for some of this very interesting little house here. Kind of looks like everyone's grandma's house. Has a very Spanish look to it. This sort of indoor, outdoor, stairwell, open air plan. Really only works certain climates only have that luxury. Wish I knew more about this here Lindsay house, but I'm sure we'll get there. All of this being same. It almost looks like it's uh, set up like a museum right now. It doesn't really look actually lived in. It looks like it's uh, sort of a recreation of what it used to look like. But I could be wrong on that. Some people live like that. This is Yambia's house. We're still in St. John's County. We're still in Florida. The Burt house. At first this threw me off. This is the old Spanish treasury that's now called the Burt House, but I'm gonna say that these women are in like period costume because there's simply no way that that's actually what they're wearing while this person took a modern photograph and the furnishings look like this. Yeah, I'm gonna say those are period costumes. This is probably a museum, especially if it's the old Spanish treasury, which would make sense why the space seems sort of uh, just stuff thrown around in it. Like, I mean, not thrown around, but just, just sort of positioned randomly. Like it wasn't really built for this. The old little, okay, like the little wash sink. Yeah, so this is more like a museum, but still, look at the old ornate quality of that they used to just make of like these bed frames and stuff. Even, these, even the mirror. It's like, dude, I don't know if there's a cobwebs up there or palm fronds. Isn't it weird how it, how it like looks a certain way, but if it's like, if it's palm fronds, it's comforting. If it's cobwebs, get the fuck out! Something about arachnids, man. They're just weird. Fascinating, but I don't want them near me. Or maybe near me, but just where I can see them. Remember one time I went to dry my face off and there was a massive like wolf spider or something similar. Like, 
the size of my hand on the towel that I wiped my face with. That was one of the few times in my life I remember a strange noise coming out of me that I didn't know I was capable of making. <laughs> right. Luckily, it didn't sound very, um, like a child. It was more of like a, whoa! And that at least made me laugh. I was like, oh, I'm that character? You never know what character you actually are, right? Until you're face situations of ex that require extreme bravery or extreme fear. Then you kind of find out the whole facade drops, right? And you're like, oh, I guess I'm that guy. So, you know, I was pleased with that. It seemed about right. Like, I made the sort of sound that one would make if they were uh, slipping on ice steps and still had the fortitude to hold onto their hat and clutch their cane as they went flailing around. A real gentleman's uh, cry for terror, you know? Or like a haunted vaudeville actor. Could have been much worse. Moving along here, this has all been in St. John's County in a place called the Jimenez Fascio House. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. At least as far as the second word goes, I'm not certain. But Jimenez, whether it's with an X or a J, you won't fool me. This monstrosity is the Brumby House. Actually, this one, that was the last one. Let's go back, just for the sake of you can know what's up. This is the Brumby House. I feel it looks familiar. Um, this is interesting. But you can almost tell the exact moment that we get to a different uh, state, right? One minute you're here in Florida. Next minute, you're here, and you can tell right away you are in a different place. And this is Georgia. Strange as that. They're very close, but yet uh, such a different style. Almost right away. Gives with that. Like, I almost knew right away before I even said anything, before I even had to look, that, uh, I was... Well, <clears throat> anyway, we are here in Georgia now. Foresight or not. Foresight or narsight. You can tell I'm clearly Australian. Setup sucks. I can't wait to get back to normal. Thanks for tolerating these dark times. Yeah, that's what's up right there. This is the Hill White Bradshaw House. We are told its alternative title is the President's Home. That's the President of the University of Georgia, that is. Built in 1855, we are told. Shocking, a university president gets a classic old home that looks out of time. Can't say I'm surprised, considering they're one of the shell companies of our demon overlords. But that's vastly oversimplifying. Plus, that's just what I heard. That's not me just saying that. Admittedly hearsay, the Kamak House. I think I'm saying that incorrectly. Well, either way, it's in Athens on Clark County in Georgia. Athens, Georgia. Having, uh, being the breeding ground of some of my, some of the musical artists I fondly admire for their musical prowess. I know them personally. Though I relish the opportunity to meet. And here, we have some very fine, very fine cast iron. Now, there was speculation within this group, the community, not here particularly, but there's been speculation of the fire of these cast iron, uh, bits having something to do with electricity just due to the oral seeming symbolism on them. And I did read recently in the history, I think I brought this up once before, a history of the, I think it was in California where they talked about incorporating the fire escapes on buildings, uh, using them when they weren't being used as fire escapes as a way to conduct electricity to the various rooms. I found that to be fascinating information. I'd never heard that before. Outside of my own reckless speculation. This is that same exact house as you can tell from the other angle where you can see the foundation. They were either very pro-basement or very post-event, let's say. The Louis Cobb Institute, this, 1858 was its birth date, and it is on the University of Georgia campus somewhere. That is all we are told. This here square pillar gentleman is the Ross Crane House. It's a the SAE Chapter House, University of Georgia. So another uh, secret society house related to the university. So probably founded by seriously evil people. Jokes aside. And kick down to the centuries. This all being the Ross Crane house still. And we're going to transition into the Deering house. Like I said, this is a low information. Uh, barely, Pepe, we barely knew you, bro. Passing by the K.A. Theta house. Yes, please. 1845. Trim and woodwork, curly maple. So we're told. Two-story brick foundations and walls. They say two-story. And I hear those words. And I, and I think I know their meaning. But is it just me or is that a window? And that. So that would imply um go go, go. that would imply to me oh there's a chair that's a chair at least i don't know about that hmm. inconclusive let's put it that way oh cleverly angled just away from the other ones uh. cleverly angled so i can't see the basement pictures you bastard i see what you did there the debostonian hall very storied building this here's the taylor henry grady house but its related name is mrs o.d grimes mrs o.d grimes old mantles replaced by recent ones we're told in this highly unusual bit of deep information. There's 13 columns that supposedly stand for the 13 states. How patriotic we were back then, I suppose, unless there's something more to it than that. Or it's just a coincidence. 
I mean, Holmes columns, like who cares? But somewhere in there is the answer. This is the School of Landscape Design. Well, that's interesting. I would have thought that the School of Landscape Design would have kept a manicured lawn, you know, like these other places that don't claim to be for landscape design. Just seems like a chaotic design. Strange advertisement, anyway. I think it's the only picture that we're given of this amazing landscape design school. Yeah, true. <clears throat> we'll carry on. This is the Judge Lumpkin Sosnowski Homeschool. Well, it's not at your home, but it's at someone's homeschool. They claim it was built in, uh, no one knows. And here we have the Lumpkin Stone Hall House. This one. Lumpkin Stall, Lumpkin Hall, Lumpkin Hall Stone House. Also belongs to the State College of Agriculture and part of University of Georgia. 1848 is the building date. 1850 here, and Dupree Honeycutt is the related name. And uh, that's all we're given, folks. That's all that you know that you know that you're gonna know about this here house, at least as far as today goes. Yes, sir. Nicholson House here, also in Athens, Stark County, Georgia, related to one Madison G. Nicholson. And we're told that in 1916, the front was restored to nearly the original state and the old columns from another house were used. So this is sort of like a hybrid historical house, see? But I guess if someone somewhere is getting rid of columns, that's a very nice way to... Wait a second. In 1916, the front was restored to the original state. So between 1825, that's 90 years. Yeah, I guess it's enough time, to reasonable time, to restore it. But restored back exactly the way it was it means it was either way ahead of its time. Something weird about that story. Because if it was restored after only 90 years back to its original state, and this is its original state, meaning it looked like something totally different in 1825, except if this is the original state, it looks like this is what it looked like in 1865, 1825. So interesting that this style would be so prevalent in the time as early as 1825, is what I'm saying. Very clumsily and with no grace. I'll play no information makes Jack a dull boy, maybe. This is the old college, it's called. Part of the old, uh, I'm assuming University of Georgia somehow. I don't know. But look at those windows. Just look at them windows. What are they doing down there? What are they freaking doing down there, dude? This is also part of the old college. We're told this one was built in the year 1800, so it's, uh, it bad boy's got some years on her. Really doesn't look like it, does not It's relatively modern, but again, look at them windows. Right underneath every single window there, there's a window. And this here's a window, too. You just gotta turn it into a door. See that? The real door. Who knows? It was under here. You'd have to show me the basement. Pi Kappa Hall. 1836, we're told. The debating club, University of Georgia, where all the cool kids hang out. People with no real life experience, just debating furiously about life experience. Upson House. That's not a knock on them. That's a knock on the old system, boy. Don't you come down on me too hard. I'm just a rambling man. Down here in Georgia, they move a little slow. I suppose that's the way folks like it. Yeah, Rick, down here in 1840, you got the old Upson House up there in the street there. Folks reckon it was built around 1840. Been the Upson family since at least 1870 is what I heard. Now, they say it's a two-story Greek revival, but I got my own suspicions. I think there's three stories. This one's a place. Thank you, local Georgian. When do I get paid? The old Upson house built in 1839 related to the Mrs. Simpson. The Mrs. Simpson. There's a kitchen that was original that was separate to the building, but alas, it is... It burned. It burned. Barrington Hall, this is also original separate kitchen, but now burned. Frame construction above a brick foundation. Really? Built by Barrington King. Curious. Maybe they only had enough brick to do the foundation. Or maybe when they came here it was pretty much just a foundation. Hell, I don't know. You might could help me out with that. All I know is around here folks is asking questions. Questions I ain't here before. Thanks, local fake. Thanks, terrible fake Georgian accent fake guy. You, you thought you've been, you've been tremendous. This is the Barrington Hall as well. With the same exact facts as the Barrington Hall caption that I told you one moment ago. This is the Boa Call, 1838, related to Mrs. J.B. Wing. This is the home of Theodore Roosevelt's mother, Martha. Built by the mayor. Uh, the old combination home builder slash mayor. That's, uh, very, very common for those industries to be so co-mingled. In fact, a lot of the things that you do as a mayor are very similar to building a house with your own hands. That's the only way I can explain these completely manly construction mayors seem to pop up all over America. Just for this one time period and then vanish. Maybe those jobs are now overseas, huh? Is that what you'd like us to believe? Look at you, Don Lemon. Look at you, jerks. This is the Lewis Somerville house in Roswell. Oh, wait. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I, I lied, okay? Damn it. Slow down. The Lewis Somerville House, all right? 1845, Mrs. George W. Wing, not J.B. Wing, different wing is to be held responsible for this. This is a one story over a high basement, like as in the basement has a drug problem. Thanks. That might've been obvious, but 
just wanted to point that out. Mimosa Hall. Not a brunch place. No, sir. Just an old building, also called the Phoenix Hall. Built in 1830. The Phoenix Hall, huh? Hilarious. The original house burned to the ground on the night of the housewarming party. Oh, housewarming, they took that very literal. However, that was quickly rebuilt on the same exact plan, so don't you worry, it was it was meant to look like this. What a totally believable story. A place called the Phoenix Hall that burned to ground on the night of its housewarming, but was shortly rebuilt the same way. How very symbolic and very ridiculous. Whether it's real or whether it's someone going through these motions intentionally, it's ridiculous. Dr. Baird House. No, I'm not saying Baird funny like Blue Baird or whatever. I'm saying Baird is his name. No, I don't mean your hair faces. Baird. Not that difficult. I guess Mimosa Hall could also be a breakfast place. The information that we have is limited. The Dr. Baird House was born or built Baird in a time when no one knows. That's right, because all it has is a name. So that just, uh, I just led you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is uh, going terribly. This is the Dr. Baird house with the same exact mount information. At just a different angle. None? None at all. Thankfully, this house doesn't even have a name. It's just called uh, the address. 902 Broadway, Columbus in Muskogee County. I think that's how I'm saying that, right? No information about the house, only that it looks like it's got wooden columns. Well, maybe not. They might be brick with plastic covered. Either way, you know, columns. Columns like you see them. This is the Judge Crawford house. Jeez, I thought there was going to be like an apartment complex, but nope. An 1858 uh, house built uh, by George, or lived in by George Martin Crawford. First story is brick. Second story would be wood. Hmm, interesting. It's a massive porch, top to bottom. Pretty dope. It's like a hotel, though. Doesn't look like a house to me. This is the Cooper house. Same city and county. Nobody knows Nathan about this here house, but she sure is a beauty. Just look at that bad boy. Putting the uh, Landscape Society to shame, this is the These Are the Elms, or the Estes Bowers house. Allegedly constructed in 1832, built by Hanson Scott. Estes. And that is all that we are told. This must be a marvelous neighborhood. This house has too many names that are hyphenated for me to uh, give any regard to. So make up your minds. It's also called or used to be called the Lion House for reasons of which I puzzled. I puzzled for days and I couldn't figure out why. Why it would be called the Lion House. But still, calling it nothing is better than calling it a name with three hyphens. Remember that hyphenated name people. <laughs> this here building was built in 1830 and they say the balcony is restored or they added it on to the original structure. Oh, so either restored or added. I mean, there's a big difference. I would think that that would be, you know, obvious be restored and added, but it seems like an unnecessary inclusion, don't you? This is the Mott House, 1851. We're told it's a one-story entrance porch with a four ionic columns and I don't understand what they mean by one story. I really don't. What is that? There's clearly three or four. Like how stupid do they think we are? They say they raised the roof in 1892 to a steep mansard with an attic. Okay, so you added this one on. There's still three fans stars with a one on it. One, dude? Means you've been wrong for hundreds of years. Okay, hundreds. Okay, it's clearly at least a two-story building. Three minimum, but four in actuality. <laughs> I mean, you're off by three stores, dude. You're off by 70 friggin' 5%. We're not even surveyors, dude. We're just dudes at home looking at pictures, okay? And you still botched it? Like, come on, bro. This fantastic house here, after skipping the Peabody house, is the Peas house. P-E-A-S-E, -E, like a, you're appeased, I guess. Um, cut that from the record, Jimmy. Building structure, 1855, converted into four apartments. Wow, one home is now four apartments. Well, damn, that's a cool looking house. Wowie, frickin' wowie, dude. What a place to be alive in. Adorable, really is adorable. And that cast iron work is to be commended. What is this, the backyard? God, it's absolutely incredible. You gotta have a big family for that, though, dude. Can't be living in a place like that alone. It's just weird. Miss Florence Slade home. It's called, uh, we're told that, uh, Captain Slade bought it in 1878 and opened a school for girls. Well, what a creep. I only say that because I'm jealous that I can't go there. I was born at an earlier time when I decided at quite a young age what gender I was. There was no confusion. I can say with confidence they won't let me in there. This is St. Elmo. Not the name of the house. That's the actual saint himself. And this is all still part of the house. This is uh, where they kept the pigeons, apparently. Literally. Unless I'm misunderstanding. This is C Mrs. C.M. Wolfolk House. Same city, Columbus, same county, Georgia. Gorgeous home. Look at that cast iron work. 
These truly are marvelous homes. Some of them very otherworldly, like this one, and always seeming to belong to the same groups. The judge, the mayor, the university, the school, the treasury, the bank, the insurance building, the fraternity, the firehouse, the library, the post office, the city hall. And if you ain't on that list, you don't get to live here. You're not part of the club. You're not up your own ass enough. This is the Alexander McGeehy Woodle House. I know I said I wouldn't do a three hyphenated name, but I lied, okay? I had a little bit more energy this time. One story over again, another high basement. But there's a problem here. A problem here in Muskogee County. This is just called Modern House. That's it, Modern House. No, uh, no information and no reason to be on the survey. This is the Body House. Related names are Mrs. Bell Body, Mrs. Van Body, and I rocks the body that rocks the body. We're told it's got a wood construction on a brick foundation. That's what we're told. And that we can also see right down there. See them little bricky poos? Hey guys, here we are. Oh, oh. And I knew that. Built on top of the houses that were built by angels, maybe. I don't know, but it reminds me of that one time that I was like... Oh.